I'm very excited today, guys, because today I'm going to be reviewing a beer with three YouTube legends. Let's check it out. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Shane's Craft Beer Review. Oh my god, is this freaking awesome! Not only do I have local legends, Ray and Paul from the Elkanauts, check this guy out. This is not green screened. This is not green screened. He's actually at my bar. Brian the Beer Snob, the 2023 fan favorite Chuggy Award winner. God, I am so excited. Why aren't you guys dressed like it's cold? It's freaking freezing <laughs> in here. There's a it is not snowman cold. inside the bar right here. It's not melting. Brian's been having a very difficult time up here in Canada since he's been up here since uh, earlier today. Um, but what I wanted to do, I've been saving this. I have this bottle of beer that I got from Mallory and Chu uh, when we were down in Chicago back in July at the 2023 uh, Beer Tubers Convention, and I've been saving it for a special occasion. And I can't think of a more special occasion than having Brian the Beer Snob, Ray, and Paul from the Elkanauts all here at my bar. So I'm very excited to crack into this. So today we have the Goose Island Bourbon, Reso Bourbon Reserve, learn to talk Shane, County 150 brand stout. This is a small batch that was brewed and bottled in 2021 by Goose Island in Chicago, Illinois. I can't wait to get we into this. We were all in Chicago just oh, last yeah. summer. This we Bourbon Resort, I can't wait to try <laughs> Reserve. it. Reserve. <sighs> Shane's had a couple of beers today, guys. You'll have to excuse me, but that's okay. <laughs> So here is our bottle. This is a 600 mil bottle, which is kind of a weird little uh, size, I guess. Uh, collaboration with our friends at Old Forester. Uh, brewed, barrel aged, and bottled. Yeah, I'm so looking forward to this guy. You guys have never had this, nope. obviously, before. No, not at all. Never had that one, but I've never been disappointed from anything that they do in this series. No, not at all, for yeah, sure. We some Goose Island stuff up here, and everything I've had has been good, but... And because, the reserve is. because we're using these little small glasses, I should probably semi-soft pour this. Now, this uh, particular stout has only been chilled, not cold, um, because I want to make sure that we can get the full flavors of this mm -hmm. beer, for sure. I can hear the effervescence yeah. of the hear, other glasses. Like, hear, open up like a Coke bottle or something. Hear the effervescence. It looks like Coke in there. Ooh. It is it pretty dark. Better than Coke. Betcha. I like Coke, but it's going to be better. Oh, that's just about empty. So let's, I'm going to do a quick little top up here for the boys. Little top up here for Ray. Oh, yeah. And a little bit for Paul oh, as well. There we go. You. You're welcome. Okay, so let's grab this, guys. Let's get a little nose on it here. Please feel free to shout out your thoughts at any point in time. Woo-wee. Oh, yes. <laughs> for me, it's like the dark fruits. It's like plums and prunes and stuff like that. Yes. You're definitely getting that. Uh, I get prunes, and I'm not liking it. <laughs> but it, I tell you, it's going to taste way more fantastic than it smells. Even though I've never had it, I'm making that guarantee. I'm loving the fake. And it, I am getting quite a boozy note on this, uh, probably from the bourbon. I'm just trying Absolutely. to see. This is up there. I'm going to oh, see. there we go. Now that I see that the alcohol content on the back, 15.6% alcohol by volume. So, so is that beer, a barley wine then? Uh, no, it's a, it's a, a stout. This huh. beer would be illegal for sale in my state of Georgia because it's over 14% alcohol. Really? Good to know. Against the law. 15. You can buy that in the next state over and bring it back into Georgia, but you cannot buy it in Georgia. Ooh. Strictly because of it, which is stupid. It's the archaic beer laws in my state. It's kind of very similar here in Canada where anything over 12% has to be considered a wine to be at that alcohol level. Yep. Right. But uh, I say we just jump into this. You guys want to jump? All right. Let's hey, do it. It is ab an absolute pleasure to have these legends all here with me. It's absolutely fantastic sitting in my bar. Cheers. Cheers, Brian. That's good. Cheers, guys. Cheers, everybody. See, the first oh. thing, the first, like, oh. image oh. that I get when I swallow this is, that's not a beer-flavored beer. That is not beer. It is not a beer flavored beer. And there's this has got a ton of different flavors, and I guarantee you, as you hold it in your hand and it warms up, you're even going to get even more stuff. Wow! Out of it. But it is a complex beer. There's a lot of stuff going on here. There it's is a lot of stuff going on here warm. for sure. It's oh, warm. It's warm. And the thing is, I mean, I don't taste the alcohol at all. 
Oh, I do. I do. I can for... definitely taste the alcohol. <laughs> yeah, sure. Good. You know what? Brian is so cold right now being I up think, here in Canada. Everything he's, I've he's been tasting tasting up here has been off because I'm just frozen solid. Yeah, because I, I definitely notice the alcohol. I beers where I immediately taste the alcohol, but this, that's not the flavor that I'm getting off of this. However, my chest is very warm. I've yeah. taken two sips, and my chest is warm. Well, I would hope so. You're in a freaking parka, man. Yeah, this is pretty potent. No, this is strictly <laughs> so, alcohol warm. It's for sure. But it's pretty smooth going down. I, mean, mm-hmm. I, can, I can, I definitely get that warmth that Ray was talking about going down your chest. Immediate. On yeah. a cold winter's day, sitting by the fireplace, oh, for sure, with a book and a cigar, this would be an amazing thing to have. For sure. No, there's yeah. a weird plum bitterness kind of. You mm. know that that pithy plum skin flavor yes yes yep. you're right yeah absolutely right oh pithy is a, probably the wrong word for no but the, I, I understand but what you're saying though i pithy the fool i pithy the fool <laughs> oh, jesus <laughs> leave it to paul yeah for sure that's why we have him here yes for the comedy um but i i'm getting like that booziness in it but like you said paul it's very smooth it is i'm getting that str- you can tell it's not a five percent or you can tell it's not a ten percent or even it definitely has that booziness but oh my God, is this tasty? Like this, like like Paul said, this is a nice thing to sit by a fire, and just sip with some friends, much like I'm doing today. And I do have my fire going. I know you guys can't I'm see it right now. Finally, getting warm enough where I'm going to unzip my coat. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> if I can figure yeah, out how to grab it with these gloves on, it's uh. You having yeah, a hard time there, Brian? It's a. Uh, Brian's not used to it's layering like an instant up. Instant heat. <laughs> You know, it is warm. It, it does warm you up. It does it gets it's you in the flavorful. mood for the facilities. Now, I can tell you, I, I don't know Canada mm. speak how much how much that costs. Like I say, in, in the United States, at least in Georgia, where I'm from, that bottle probably is in the neighborhood of twenty five dollars. Wow, U.S. U.S. So and a lot of people look at that Canadian and say, "Oh, no, I'm not. I can get a case of beer for that price." But that whole case of beer you're going to get for two hundred dollars, it's not going to taste like this. That's right. And it's not going to have have the. Uh, this is a technical term. Ass kickery. Ass kicker. Uh, yeah. This beer very has. very technical, Brian. Very this technical. This beer has a lot of ass kicker in it because I can Absolutely. tell you, I've taken three sips, and I, I'm feeling it. Oh, oh, I'm definitely feeling it, and, and I'll tell you, this is definitely not purchased for its chuggability. Correct. <laughs> no. it's, it's, you this put is that in a funnel, you're a fool. Yes. Yeah. Well, you, you'll be a drunk fool. Yes. But for, sure, <laughs> for sure, this is something that needs to be appreciated. This yeah. is not like something you're gonna chug back at a party. And it's or, okay if it takes you an hour or two hours to drink that, because it's okay. Because I, I tell you, this this beer is chilled. It's chilled, not cold, not cold. Or, That's it's right. Chilled, but as it warms up, it's even going to become more alive in right. what it tastes like. I'm finding even more of the fruitier flavors coming yeah. out yes. as I'm drinking this. It's uh, it's very pleasant. It's just. Very relaxing. Yeah. It's great. Is. I love this. Nothing offensive at all about this. No, and like Brian said, it's you're getting that like the dark fruits, like the like the plum and uh, maybe a bit of fig in there as well, or a, a date yeah, or absolutely. something like that. Yeah. And it is really, really nice. I I could sit and I wish I had more of these. Thank you, Mallory and Chu, for giving me this bottle back in the summer. It's fantastic. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. I, quick, quick little last thoughts, guys. Any uh. I was just going to say, I, I appreciate the flavor over the aroma. For me, the aroma is yes. actually a little bit off-putting, but the flavor is really, really right. nice. Yeah, the aroma is a bit... Now, of course, we all have our different flavors we like. I get a hint of licorice off the aroma, but I like... A lot of people are turned off by black licorice. I love black licorice. Yeah. Too. Don't mind it one bit. So... The fact that that's what I'm smelling doesn't bother I me. I do. All. I do actually. That's, now that I've closed it up, I can actually smell a little bit of that. And now that you now. say that, that's the that's the flavor profile that's on the roof of my mouth. Yes. Is that black licorice lingering? Yeah. Which I is like funny because I I personally don't like black licorice like Ooh. Ooh. Uzo oh, yeah, and yeah. Zambuca. Yeah, portions then, if you got some. I'll no, like no, it. this is good because it's the black licorice is just it's not. It's not a flavor that's bang right up there and that you notice it right away. It's not but, but until like Brian said it and we're sitting there, go, oh, like yeah, there's that licorice in there, which actually goes good with all the other dark fruits in this beer. Mm-hmm. This this is awesome. Um, if I'm gonna rate this, I rate it at a five. While I'm rating it, you guys can probably maybe think about what it is. I like this. I could drink this all the freaking time. It is smooth. It is nice. It is flavorful. Out of five, I'm going four and a half. Ooh. I really, really like it. I could drink this all the time. This, uh, to me, is a perfect special occasion beer. 
which is what we have yes, today. Exactly. Absolutely. This is for this is for you don't want you don't want to drink this like a daily drinker. No, I absolutely not. Want to. Nope. Nope. But on a certain special occasion, and you bust this out, it's gonna uh, a lot of appreciation is gonna go on. For sure. There. Mm-hmm. For sure. That's so, a beer. So what would you on a scale of one to five? I know you don't usually rate stuff on your channel, Brian. What would you give this on a scale of one to five? I love the Bourbon County series from Goose Island. Never had a bad one. I don't know if it gets much better as far as this classification for me. Right. It doesn't get much better. If I'm going out of five, I'm saying four nine five because I'm sure it could be a little four, bit better. Four nine but I think five. It's, I think it's wow. that outstanding of a beer, and it and they, it is really it's not good. just like ooh, this one's good, but the one I had last year sucked. Every single year that I try it, I'm kind of blown out of the water by it. Right, and this is the 2021 version, so it's a couple years old, so it's been at least been able to age that two years, and really. Oh, the flavor is great. Uh, Ray, what do you what do you think about this? Um, I don't like it nearly as much as you guys do. Um, yeah, it's definitely a it's a sipper. It's a once in a while kind of beer. For I'm wondering sure. with I'm not a huge fan of dark chocolate, but I wonder if you had a big piece of dark chocolate to chew on while you're that would act, yeah. I think that might be actually really cool. Um, I've never been a big fan of the barley wine style, which this really reminds me of. Um, so I'm going to call, I'm going to call it a three and a quarter. Okay. That's, that's fair. I mean, we all, cause we all have, di- and that's why I wanted to do it with four of it. Cause we all have yeah. different tastes and we can get a better analysis. Uh, Paul, what do you think about He's this? He's disappointed in me. Ray, you sad <laughs> sack of piece of crap. Honestly, an amazing, and just hitting on what Brian said earlier, this is definitely a special occasion beverage. For sure. Absolutely. This is something you share with your good friends and not the booze hounds you hang out at the bar. <laughs> for um, sure honestly I don't even know why Ray's here wow <laughs> I, I like this beer I, if I was going to rate this I'm probably going to give this a four and a half uh, I'm not Sorry. used to drinking the good stuff I'm trying to do air quotes here but with one hand uh, but I would definitely give this a four and a half I would definitely drink this again and I would for be sure. honored if someone gave me some of this from this bottle and thank you very much no problem for giving us that honor and thank you for having us on the show it's you know it's great and it's it's such a cool experience having like i said ray and paul i can hang out with pretty much anytime i want they're they local but to get together with brian and have the four of us together again which we haven't done since july is a really special thing for me um because <laughs> i love these guys and that's why i cracked open this bottle that i was saving for a special occasion we should that's hang awesome. out again in july we should do that in July. Let's we make should that do happen. that in July. Let's we should that do that in July, July for sure. That would be Have awesome. your people call my people. We'll make it happen. Perfect. July it is. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, look. Put it in your phone. Are you trying to call Brian? Because he's literally right here. <laughs> oh, I'm going to call his people. Oh, you're going to call his people. Hey, Brian's yeah. people? Yeah, July. Yeah, make it happen. Thanks, man. Who's Brian? <laughs> Wait, my phone's ringing. What's going so on? So there you go, guys. Anyway, that, like I said... This is an absolute banger of beer. Hello. Um, it's great to have all these guys. July. Yeah, I'll do it. Okay. Canada. Yeah, I'll do it. Okay. All right. He's used to the Canadian weather now, so he's good with it. <laughs> it's only a little bit colder here in July than it this is, is now. This is going to be my July outfit right here. Oh yes, definitely wear that in July. <laughs> but I've learned a lesson. I will wear snowshoes because these sh- tennis shoes I had were inadequate. That's true. They were inadequate. I about slipped three times today. You did, for sure. At my age, you can break a hip. You need to make sure they're sealskin bound snowshoes. <laughs> Absolutely. But yeah, guys, definitely check this. If you get the chance to pick up one of these, I, I've, I've never seen it up here. And again, I'm thankful to Mallory and Chu for giving this to me. Um, and again, I want to thank Ray and Paul from the Alconauts, Brian, the beer snob, of course, um, for joining me today. So uh, cheers, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. And I uh, hope you have a fantastic Christmas season. Cheers. Cheers, everyone. Cheers.